Hello viewers. So last week I put the red arc in um, and that's worked really well. It's all conduited and it's all uh, basically finished off. Um, to what I'm going to do now, the second stage this weekend is I'm going to add a uh, gauge. I've got some ways of checking voltages with the phone and different things, but I just want a quick look gauge, like a quick uh, glance gauge in the cab so I can see what the main and auxiliary battery are doing. Um, I found a really good little gauge, um, not cheap, but uh, does exactly what I want, uh, and I'll show you that. And I'm also going to uh, hook my panels up to here versus the controller that's on the panel. So the panels have a PWM controller. This has an MTTP controller or MPPT, whichever way that is, I can't remember. Um, uh, and I'm the this controller is supposed to um, be a more efficient controller than PWM. And there's some you know, discussion around the benefits, pros and cons of each type. Um, and I'll explain um, in layman's terms why the um, red arc should be better. So let's go and uh, get this gauge installed and um, get that up and running. So here's the little battery monitor. It's got a cover on the screen at the minute. It's quite thick that way. It's a little thicker than I, th saw, I thought it was from the picture, but it has a uh, auxiliary and main battery line on there. Um, one really cool feature is um, if you hook up one of the wires, there's uh, four wires, so there's a ground, and um, a ground, uh, an ignition, an A and a B battery. If you hook up that ignition, it'll actually turn itself on and off as you uh, turn the key on and off. So that's uh, a pretty cool little feature. I actually bought a relay to do that, but uh, since that feature's built in, I don't have to use it. So let's uh, get some panels off. I've got a panel from, I've got a wire from the or auxiliary battery for the two-way radio. So I'm going to use that as my second battery ignition uh, voltage source and I'll find one for the uh, main battery source, maybe the cigarette lighter or, or something like that. So let's get some panels off and, and have a look. So we just take off this uh, bottom panel by taking this screw out. And that should just pop down. And then we should be able to just pop this panel here out. Like that. That uh, thing there is in the way. And then we just need to pop off this panel here. And that gives me access. There's the two way radio sits. We just pop this up here, and that's the two way radio. And the power source for that is where I'll get the power from the dual battery because that's powered by the dual battery by the second battery. So we'll just pop him out. So, somewhere there you go, that's that's the this here comes from the dual battery specifically to power that radio so here is the wires from the gauge so ground ignition and the two um, um, batteries so I'm going to take both of those off or should I go in here somewhere So what I've decided to do is T into here for the accessories and into here for the dual battery. So I'm just going to extend a little wire out so all this can be in the one spot and, and neatly um, uh, uh, taped up so or heat shrunk. So that's what we're doing now. So I'm just teeing in here with this bit of wire just so I can get back to the other one and I'm going to heat shrink it all. So we'll just solder that up. Mm. 
I always like to solder things, if at all possible. So this is our accessories wire that's going to go onto either the purple or the yellow. Now I just need to tee into here to get the um, uh, ground and the auxiliary battery. So just uh, stripping everything back, going to re, re shrink wrap it and stick a little tap in there for the. And I've taken the fuse off, uh, taken the battery leads off, so. We should be right to go. Okay, so we will heat shrink it. Okay. Put back up in there. Okay, so we have yellow is main, violet is auxiliary, 12 volt is the ignition. So we should be able to now hook this up, we'll get some of uh, this stuff, uh, maybe I can get a smaller, smaller one. Okay, so we have yellow is main, violet is auxiliary, 12 volt is the ignition. So we should be able to now hook this up. Tin the ends of these. This one, and this one. So here is the little uh, little uh, meter. I'll just try and uh, I'll just put that there. Let's stay there, and we will. Um, so you can see it automatically pops up and tells us what the voltage is on each battery. The little graph below. So we'll mount that up in here somewhere and uh, tidy everything up.
So I probably put it, should have put some heat shrink up here, but I forgot. So I'll have to use tape. Okay, so I've got it just sitting there. It's just double-sided tape that seems to be quite strong. And when you start it onto accessories, it'll fire up and give you the voltages. And then when you start it, it's also got a little uh, light sensor there. So on a night time, it'll dull itself down, which is quite handy. So there you go, that's all fitted. So now we will uh, get on to playing with the solar panels. It's the next day um, and I've wired up all the, the uh, wiring for the panels and I'll run through what I've done there on both the panels and here for the test but also just to, to, to wire it up that way to give me options. Um, I'm just taking the top charge off here so we can get the controller to uh, some current in there so I've just got a light down here I'll show you um, pulling about 12 amps so I'll show you what I'm going to use to uh, test it and uh, how I've got it set up this plug here that goes straight to the battery with a fuse and I use that for plugging the compressor in and I also use it for putting the panels on when I'm using the PWM controller which is what traditionally I've been doing and then I put another one over here which goes to the red arc which I can plug on when I want to use the MPPT controller and what I'm going to do is switch between those two um, when I uh, do the test and on the panel which is just here <coughs> there's no sun today I'm just waiting for the sun to come out before I can test this I actually have wired it up so there's two two um, Anderson plugs one for the PWM controller that uses this controller and just comes out at um, charge voltage and then the MPPT which goes to the red arc so I can actually switch between them at any time in the bush so if I have if I come across somebody or with another vehicle that doesn't have a controller and we need to charge their batteries I can use this if it's with uh, my vehicle I can use either um, and what I want to do is to see if the MPPT is actually more efficient but unfortunately it's uh, pretty cloudy today so I've got to wait for a gap in the clouds to be able to get some steady sun to be able to make it uh, comparative so <clears throat> so one thing you can do on these Prados is put a different uh, put a diode basically in where the alternator fuse goes and this um, drops the sense volts by a little bit and makes the alternator actually charge properly this is a temperature compensated alternator so it'll tend to back off so that's one thing you can do with these um, you can buy those they're about fifty dollars off ebay but they're pretty easy to make so i usually just uh, make one i actually had had one in there that i've made for the whole life of this car and i broke it just getting it out so i'm just um, making another one so pretty easy to make i'll uh, show you so all they are is a diode, you can see the diode at the end there and I put a fuse in it so I just use a normal car fuse and these have the micro fuses, you can change it to a mini fuse, the blades are still the same, it just allows it to stick out a bit so you can solder on there and then I just uh, encase the whole thing in shrink wrap and uh, that will up the voltage to about 14 and a bit when it's cold and about 14.1 or 2 when it's, um, when it's warm and you can make that for a couple of dollars Okay, so it looks like we're going to have a sun for a little bit, something consistent. So let's uh, get this tested. So this is on the MTTP controller. We're sitting at 6 to 6.2, 6.3. It's slowly rising. Let's see if we can get that to stabilise. And uh, in that sun, and what we'll do, we'll switch it over to the PWM. So 6.7 at stabilised, so let me go and change it over. Okay, we've changed it over, I'll take it off there, we'll zero it and we'll put it on here and we're looking at 
So we're getting about an amp more on the MPPT controller. So let's leave it there for a little bit and see what that does. Five point four. So let's switch it back. We just stick it on this other side. The red arc's kicked in. We zero the meter. And it's at about 4.3, Slowly working its way up. So there you go, it's at 6. At about 6.4. So 6.4 on the red arc. Let's stick it back onto the PWM and see what we get. We're getting about 5.4 so it's about an amp difference in this sunlight getting an extra amp out of the uh, red arc so there you go that's uh, as they as uh, is suggested the MTTP is a little better on the uh, efficiency <coughs> so in layman's terms how this differences between the PWM and the MTTP the MPPT, the, the Red Arc uh, controller can take the extra voltage, a, a panel generally runs at 17 to 20 odd volts, it will pull down the voltage to the uh, charge voltage, the rest of the voltage it will turn into current and that's where you get that little bit extra current while the PWM controller throws away that current. So there is advantages and disadvantages, PWM is cheaper. Um, been around a lot longer, fairly well proven. Um, that's probably the main benefits. And the MTTP is uh, more efficient, but they uh, don't work as well in heat. I don't know how much of a problem that is with the modern ones, but as a rule, they don't work as well in heat as the PWM, which obviously when you're in, in, the, in, in sunlight, that uh, everything's hot. But as a rule, most people will tell you that the MTTP is the newer, more advanced way of using solar panels, and you can get a, a little bit of something for nothing, so to speak, with that extra voltage being turned into current. So uh, that's the sort of layman's difference between the two. So there you go, guys. That's um, only just managed to get enough sun to do that little bit of a test. It probably wasn't perfect, but the sun was fairly consistent. But uh, when we have a really good, clear day, I will uh, do it again just to make sure, but generally the red arc was in this this amount of sun was creating about a, an amp more, which uh, every every amp is worth it when you're trying to uh, run fridges and lights and different things when you're camping. So, oh, I hope that uh, helped out somebody, inspired somebody uh, somebody to to give this a crack. Um, yeah, if you think it's worth uh, these videos are worth it. Um, down below hit uh, subscribe and share them around it's always good to see that count go up not that I make anything out of it or, or do it for any other reason besides it's just I like experimenting and I think other people might uh, get something out of it catch you guys next time